Hi guys, today I'm going to do a video purely about Italian football and it is going to be something topical, so watch it sooner rather than later. Yes, we're going to talk about Juventus, Italy's most successful club, at least domestically, with those 36 league titles, but everything is falling by the wayside now, fourth in their last two domestic seasons. Now they're struggling, it appears, to make it into next season's Champions League. In this season's competition, in Europe's Premier Club competition, they are already out. So we're going to be talking all about their domestic form, their European travails, Max Allegri, and whether he's still the man to lead the Bianconeri or not. But what I will say is I will be using past comments from Allegri to justify my beliefs about what has formed him as a coach, how he sees the game, his footballing philosophy. So if you don't speak Italian, please do click on the subtitles so that you can be absolutely sure as to what these clips are referring to. Without further ado, away we go. Come dice Mario Mandzukic, no good. As so eloquently put there by Mario Mandzukic, yes, no good for Juventus Mandzukic. One of the former Juventus players that was involved in that all-conquering side that won the league title for nine straight years in Allegri's five years in charge in his first spell. They won the Scudetto five times on four occasions. They also won the League and Cup double. They made it to the Champions League final twice. It did appear that the return of Allegri was going to be a silver bullet for Juventus when it came to resolving all of their problems. Lest we forget, nine straight Scudetti. It started with Conte. It continued with Allegri. Sarri had one season in the job and got dismissed, despite the fact that he continued that winning run. And then after nine league titles in a row, Sarri was sacked. Pirlo came in, led the club to fourth in Serie A, also won the Coppa Italia and the Super Cup. Yet that wasn't enough to keep him in a job. He was still a novice tactician. However, Allegri didn't even go one better. Last season, no trophies whatsoever. Juventus once again fourth. But once they brought back in Pogba, once they went through this very expensive summer rebuild of bringing in the likes of uh, Angel Di Maria, Bremer from under Inter's noses, everyone thought, OK, now Allegri has the group of players that he needs to be successful. And once again, he can bring back the glory days to Juventus. But that's not proven to be the case. So much so, they're out of the Champions League in the group stage, which will have serious financial repercussions. And they're also playing catch-up in Serie A. It does appear unlikely that Juventus are going to end their league drought. And it is exactly that now for the 36 times champions. It looks like a third straight season in which they're going to fail to win the Scudetto. So why is that a problem? Well, quite simply because Allegri and Juventus have both built their entire reputations on winning. And winning, ultimately, with the Bianconeri, is all that matters. Senti in disore di Ippica. Eh? Allora, eh, bravo. Allora, ne, nelle corse cavalli basta mettere il musetto davanti. Non c'è bisogno di vincere di, di cento. Musetto davanti. Il muso. Fotografia, corto muso. Semplice. Quello che perdi di corto muso, quello che perdi di corto muso, arriva secondo. Quello che vinci corto muso primo. Poi, poi, poi non scrivi. Poi, aspetta, fammi finire. Poi non è che scrivano ho vinto di 30. Primo. Corto muso. The notion of corto muso is all very well and good when you are lifting trophies. But now, in the absence of silverware, Bianconeri fans are beginning to judge Allegri on other factors. The yardstick has changed. He can no longer simply justify everything by saying, I won the Scudetto, I won the Coppa Italia, I got Juventus into the Champions League knockout stages. No, now fans are looking towards a clearly identifiable style of play. They want to see progress on the pitch. Tangibly so when it comes to developing young players and when it comes to playing attractive football. I should stress that Juventus have never been particularly synonymous with a particularly aesthetically pleasing style of play, which is why their motto of winning is not only important, it's the only thing that counts, has been so prevalent. However, now they're not winning and they're also occasionally, or maybe even frequently, serving up fairly turgid fare on the pitch, which then becomes a problem for Allegri. And the main issue for him is he believes that results are objective data, and he's right. Whereas what makes for good football is rather more subjective. I don't know what I'm I don't know what I'm I'm 52 years old. If someone me lo spiega, I'm with my humility, I'm there and I'm trying to understand how to play good. Maybe I'll try it. 
Naturally, those last comments from Allegri should not be taken at face value. He was being sarcastic, disingenuous, perhaps even facetious when saying he didn't know what it meant to play good football. But those accusations were levelled against him during his first spell in charge, which was trophy laden. However, there was criticism that despite winning, Juventus were not playing champagne football. The issue now is they're still not playing champagne football and there's a dearth of silverware. So Allegri is faced with two options. Either he starts winning trophies again and fast, or there is evidence of tangible progress on the pitch that the team start to play better football and that he can also improve players and bring through youth, something which has not necessarily been evident. At this moment in time, he is naturally under pressure. He's into season two of a four-year contract. He's handsomely rewarded financially to try and get results for Juventus, and he's failing on that score at the moment. Who knows, maybe he'll be proven right when it comes to the return of those senior players that have been missing through injury, Pogba and Chiesa, who's arguably Juventus' one world-class player in their entire squad. Juventus may well stay in touch with the leading pack come the winter break for the Qatar World Cup. And with Pogba and Chiesa, who knows if they can't go on a 15-match winning run and go on to not only qualify for the Champions League, but also win the Scudetto as well. The issue for Allegri at this moment in time is that he simply does not measure up to some of his colleagues. Spalletti has Napoli playing champagne football. They're sweeping all before them at home and abroad. Pioli's Milan were excellent last season with a young group of players winning the league title for the first time in 11 years. And above all, Pioli makes light of injuries and also comes up with solutions, tactical or otherwise, or in terms of personnel, to get the best out of his team and keep them competitive. Too often, Allegri is pointing to the absence of senior players, much like Jose Mourinho has done likewise with the injury absence of Gini Wijnaldum and Paolo Dybala. Allegri and Mourinho would both point to their CVs as evidence of the fact that they tend to be right and their competitors tend to be wrong. However, at this stage, Allegri is under the greatest pressure of his coaching career and there's also the spotlight being shone on the men above him, senior management figures, President Andrea Agnelli, as well as Maurizio Arrivabene, who's the CEO, and Federico Cherubini, who is the sporting director. Juventus have preached patience in the past. They are very unlikely to change coach mid-season, and I think that's the right policy. We saw that they gave Sarri a full season and decided to move him on. They did likewise with Pirlo. I think it would be a mistake to replace Allegri at this specific moment of the season, but you can be sure that he needs to start getting results and quickly, beginning with the Derby d'Italia against Inter. I'll see you on the next one. Goodbye.